There's a passage where the Buddha compares different aspects of the path to a fortress on the frontier. For example, mindfulness is the gatekeeper. Discernment is the slippery wall that keeps the enemy from coming in. The food for the fortress is concentration. And it's good to keep this in mind. When you find yourself running out of energy, when there are really strong tasks that have to be done, and you need, you need extra reserves of energy to draw on, and you want to replenish your energy. You want to bring the mind to stillness. Not just any old stillness. There's a passage where the Buddha tells the monks it's good for them to practice the concentration based on mindfulness of breathing. And one of the monks speaks up and says, yes, I already do that. And the, monk, and the Buddha asks him, well, how do you do that? And the monk says, well, I put aside my interest in the past and my desires for the future, and I just try to be equanimous about the present as I breathe in and breathe out. And the Buddha says, well, there is that kind of breath meditation, but that's not how you get the best results out of it. The best results, he said, are, and then he goes through the 16 steps, being sensitive to long breathing, being sensitive to short breathing. This quality of being sensitive is important. The more sensitive you are to the breath, the more you, you will naturally breathe in a way that's comfortable. If we put the breath on automatic pilot, it just tends to go in and out, in and out, and it gets pretty mechanical. But if you try to sensitize yourself to how the breath actually feels as it comes in, where do you feel it? Which parts feel pleasant? Which areas of the body feel pleasant as the breath comes in? Which parts feel stressed? If you can locate any of the stressed parts, can you make them feel pleasant as well? In other words, change the rhythm, change the range of your breath, change the length. This is an area of our awareness that we tend to be very insensitive to because, as we all know, we have more important things to do than just breathe. But the breath is what keeps us going. And if it becomes mechanical, it gets uncomfortable. And when it's uncomfortable, the body feels ill at ease, and the mind feels irritable. And it saps our strength. After all, the breath is the energy of life. So you want to give it your full attention. The Pali term for this is jitta. Intent, being really sensitive. It's one of the bases for success. It's one of the factors that has to be involved in any kind of concentration. Well, there are times when you want to bring that particular quality to the fore. As the Buddha says, uh, the basis for power, you always have to have desire and persistence and in intent for there to be concentration to begin with. You have to want to get the mind to settle down. You have to stick with it, and you have to pay full attention. The fourth basis for success is optional, but it's, it's awfully helpful. That's discrimination when you get clearer and clearer on what's wrong and what's right with your concentration, and start getting ideas of how to fix what's wrong and to maintain and augment what's right. That's the discernment element. And, strictly speaking, you have to have some discernment in your concentration. Concentration without discernment drifts off and is not really all that nourishing. You've got to sensitize yourself and be very alert and very aware of what's going on. 
the more sensitive you are, the more you'll be aware of the subtle areas in the body where there's stress. And you can do something about them. As you broaden your not only your awareness of the breath, but also your concept of what's involved in the breathing. It's not just the air coming in and out of the lungs, or the air passing over the nostrils. It's the whole feeling of energy in the body. Different parts can feel like they're flowing in one direction or another direction. Different parts can feel still. There are parts that seem to be spinning around in place. There's a breath energy that's always there in the body that you have to be very careful not to squeeze as you're trying to push the, push the in and out, push the out breath out. And those you want to keep all the little muscles in your blood vessels relaxed, open. And then just breathe in whatever way feels most gratifying, because that's what's going to energize you. It gives rise to a sense of ease. It gives rise to a sense of fullness and rapture. That's your food. There's a passage in the Dhammapada where the Buddha says, How happy we are, we who have nothing. We feed on rapture like the radiant gods. And as we look for the nourishment of the mind in this sense of well-being, the sense of fullness that can come from concentration. But you have to give it your full attention for it to work. Oftentimes we get the mind in a nice place and then say, okay, let the mind go on automatic pilot. I've got other things to think about, other things to worry about. And you lose it. That quality of full attention and full sensitivity. When that goes, then the, the refreshing quality of the, the breath begins to deteriorate as well. So while you're here, this is all you have to do. Be sensitive to the breath and then respond to whatever feels best. Respond to what doesn't feel comfortable in a way that makes it feel comfortable. And then allow that sense of fullness to spread around the body, to radiate out. One good way of doing this is to find one spot in the body that you're going to take as your spot and make sure it stays relaxed, open, and full all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. If you notice the point at the out-breath when it begins to feel strained, okay, stop and breathe back in. When it reaches the point when it feels strained breathing in, okay, stop and breathe back out. But think of it being wide open all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. And then think of that sense of fullness spreading around the body like melted butter. And then do what you can to maintain that. Part of the mind will say, well, there's this, this you've got to think about, and there's that you've got to think about, and you've got to say, no, not now, not now. This is more important. You need to restock your, your energy. You need to replenish your energy. We've been through a lot for the past couple of days, and there's more work down the road. So this is our food. This is our store of supplies to keep the soldiers in our fortress well fed. This comes down to the essence of the Buddha's approach, is that you look for your wealth, you look for your nourishment inside. It may not seem like much. All you've got is your body sitting here breathing, your mind thinking and aware. But it's the way you put them all together that makes all the difference. There are treasures in here. all kinds of good things, if you allow them to develop, if you know how to develop them. And this is where you start. 
learning how to develop and then to maintain a sense of fullness and ease that you can feed from. They can give you the energy you need to put up with all the other difficulties there are in living this human life. So sensitize yourself to the breath. This is an area that we tend to overlook. You say, oh, I've seen the breath many times before. Well, you haven't seen this particular breath. You haven't been sensitive to this particular breath before. Maybe similar to other breaths you breathe, but you've got to keep giving your full attention to it. It always has to be new. It always has to be fresh. Your approach to what you're doing. And John Lee makes an interesting point. He says, mindfulness of breathing is like medicine for the body, medicine for the mind. The actual medicine is the mindfulness and alertness. The breath is the uses the word kasai in Thai, which means the medium in which you mix the medicine so it can spread out throughout the body. In other words, your mindness is mindfulness is the real medicine. The breath is what spreads the medicine around. So it's this quality of sensitive alertness. That's the actual food, or the cause of the food, the cause of the nourishment that you can get from the concentration. So give your full attention to each breath as it happens. There's another spot where John Lee says that for most of us, we get only 10% of the energy out of each breath that we could. The more energy you give to it, the more attention you give to it, the more sensitivity you bring to it, the greater the percentage of energy you'll, you'll, you'll derive from the breathing. The more you give to it, the more you get back. To try to be sensitive to the breath, not only in your chosen spot, but always make a point of looking around the body to see if there are any spots that tend to get neglected. And give them your full awareness for a while, too. And you'll be surprised at how energizing it is, both for the body and for the mind.